Relate to them truly the account of the two sons of Adam. When the two of them offered an offering, it was accepted from one of them, and not accepted from the other. Qabil said, Surely I will slay you. Habil said, Allah accepts only from the God wary. Even if you extend your hand towards me to slay me, I will not extend my hand towards you to slay you. Indeed, I fear Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. So the nafs of the other, Qabil, encouraged him and made fair seeming to him the murder of his brother. He murdered him and became one of the losers. The true original homeland of Adam and Hawa was paradise, but Iblis misled them with deception. Allah said, Did I not forbid you to eat from that tree and warned that shaitan is an enemy unto you? They said, Our Lord, we have wronged ourselves. If you do not forgive us, we shall certainly be among the losers. Then Allah said, Get down to earth and live there for a certain period of time till you die and from there you will be resurrected. On earth, they had to face conflict and struggle. No sooner had one ended than another began. Adam السلام, also had to toil to sustain himself. He had to protect himself with clothes and weapons and protect his wife and children from the wild beasts. Above all, he had to struggle with a spirit of evil. Shaitan, the cause of his expulsion from paradise, continued to beguile him and his children in an effort to have them thrown into the eternal hellfire. The battle between good and evil is continuous, but those who follow Allah's guidance should fear nothing while those who disobey Allah and follow Iblis will be damned along with him. Thus was the home of Adam and Hawa established on this earth, on this green living planet. They and all the human beings who would come from them would live and strive and carry on the struggle between good and evil until the end of the world. On it they would die. Their mortal bodies would be buried in its soil, and from it, they would be raised on the last day. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu states, Each boy born to Adam was born together with a girl twin. Adam would marry the boy of one pregnancy to the girl of another, and vice versa. However, his children were forbidden to marry their own twin. Mankind then multiplied and scattered throughout the land. They grew in their number and went farther and farther in the land. Among all these children of Adam and Hawa, only two are mentioned in the Quran. It gives them the names of Qabil and Habil. The children grew up to be strong and healthy young adults. Qabil tilled the land, while Habil raised cattle. Habil was intelligent, obedient, and always ready to obey the will of Allah. This contrasted sharply with his brother, who was arrogant, selfish, and disobedient to his Lord. The time arrived when the two young men desired life partners. This was part of Allah's plan for mankind, to multiply and form nations with different cultures and colors. Adam instructed his children according to Allah's command, that is to marry each other's twin. But Qabil was displeased, for Habil's twin sister was not as beautiful as his own. Qabil rebelled against Allah's command. Qabil had a sickness in his nafs. That was his test. It appears that since the beginning of time, physical beauty 
has been a factor in the attraction between men and women. This attraction caused Qabil to be jealous of his brother Habil. He rebelled against Allah's command by refusing to accept his father's advice. His test was jealousy. He wanted his own twin because of the beauty she possessed. And Iblis is right there. He's thinking to himself, how easy the first test is going to be. Keep in mind, no sin had been committed, my brothers and sisters. They had never seen anyone before commit such a sin. Qabil hadn't learned this from anyone. It was naturally inside of him. Habil tried to advise him, and Habil was stronger physically. He tried to advise him, my brother, fear Allah. Adam was in a difficult situation to decide. He wanted peace and harmony in his family, so he invoked Allah for help. Allah commanded that each son must offer a sacrifice, and he whose offering was accepted would have right on his side. And Adam and Hawa was giving Qabil da'wah. They began to remind their children what had happened in Jannah and how Iblis had tricked them and deceived them. Adam salam brought them together and he said to them, he knew what the outcome was going to be, but he wanted to show Qabil a lesson. He said to them, why don't you both go and offer an offering, an offering to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and see which one will be accepted. Habil sacrificed a plump young sheep while Qabil offered a bundle of the worst crops he had grown. Fire then came down from heaven, consuming Habil's offering, leaving Qabil's. Allah says, they both offered a sacrifice to Allah and it was accepted from one of them but was not accepted from the other. Qabil's sacrifice was not accepted by Allah because of his disobedience to his father and the lack of sincerity in his sacrifice. This made Qabil angrier. He realized that he won't be able to marry his own beautiful sister, so he threatened his brother. I will slay you. I refuse to see you happy while I remain unhappy. Habil, feeling sorry for his brother, replied, It would be more proper for you, my brother, to search for the cause of your unhappiness and then walk in the way of peace. Allah accepts the deeds only from those who serve and fear him, not from those who reject his commands. He continued, my brother, you are deviating from the right path and you are sinful in your decisions. It is better that you repent to Allah and forget about your foolish threat. But if you do not, then I will leave the matter in the hands of Allah. You alone will bear the consequence of your sin for the fire is the reward of the wrongdoers. Habil's plea did not reduce the hatred in Qabil's heart, nor did he fear Allah's punishment, and his soul permitted to him the murder of his brother. So he slew him and became among the losers, among those who have lost all good in this world and the hereafter. According to Ibn Kathir, Qabil started to twist Habil's neck in order to slay him. So Shaytan came and taught Qabil to take a stone and throw it on his head. Then Shaytan went to Hawa and said to her, O oh Hawa, Qabil slew Habil. She asked him, What does this mean? He said, He will no longer eat, drink, or move. She said, And that is death? He said, Yes, it is. So she started to weep until Adam came to her while she was weeping and said, what is the matter with you? She did not answer him. He asked her two more times, but she did not answer him. So he said, You and your daughters will inherit the practice of weeping, while I and my sons are free of it. This was the first death of humanity and the first criminal act.
committed by man on earth. After this, for any unjust murder, Qabil will share the sin of it. The Prophet ﷺ said, No human being is slew unjustly, but a part of responsibility for the crime is laid on the first son of Adam who invented the tradition of murdering on the earth. It is said that he was Qabil. Meanwhile, Qabil did not know what to do with his brother's dead body. He carried it on his back, wandering from place to place, trying to hide it. His anger had now been replaced with his conscience of guilt. He got tired with the burden of the corpse, which had started to emit a smell. Allah sent two raven birds that began fighting, causing the death of one. The victorious bird dug a hole in the earth, rolled its victim into it, and covered it with sand. Witnessing this, Qabil was overcome with shame and remorse. Woe unto me, he exclaimed. I was unable to do what this raven has done, that is to hide my brother's corpse. Qabil then buried his brother. This was also the first burial of a human. When Habil had not appeared for some time, Adam began to search for him, but could not find him. So he asked Qabil about Habil. Qabil rudely replied that he was not his brother's keeper, nor his protector. From these words, his father understood that Habil was dead and Adam was filled with grief. Adam and Hawa were utterly grief-stricken by the loss of their two sons. One was dead, the other was won over by the devil. He was a prophet, advising his children and grandchildren, telling them about Allah and calling them to believe in Allah. He told them about Iblis and warned them by recounting his own experience with the devil and of how the devil had tempted Qabil to slay his brother. So now Adam is living in dunya, and years and years are passing by. When he was 960 years old, the angel of death came to Adam, and he told him, Are you ready to die? Adam said, I still have 40 years to live. Allah told me, I'm going to live a thousand years. I still have 40 years to live. The angel of death said, didn't you give 40 years of your life to your son Dawood? Adam denied. Adam denied. So the children of Adam, they deny. Adam forgot. And so his children forgot. And Adam made mistakes. And his children made mistakes. And that is human nature. And when we forget, we reject. Adam denied. Denied that he gave 40 years. We need to understand that Adam forgot and Allah forgave him. Adam grew old and his children spread all over the earth. Muhammad ibn Ishaq related that when Adam's death drew near, he appointed his son Seth to be his successor and taught him the hours of the day and night along with their appropriate acts of worship. Abdul ibn Ahmad bin Hanbal narrated that Ubay ibn Ka'b said, when Adam's death was near, he said to his children, O oh my children, indeed, I feel an appetite for the fruits of paradise. So they went away searching for what Adam had requested. They met with the angels who had with him his shroud and what he was to be embalmed with. They said to them, O oh children of Adam, what are you searching for? What do you want? Where are you going? They said, Our father is sick and has an appetite for the fruits of paradise. The angel said to them, Go back, for your father is going to meet his end soon. So they returned with the angels. And when Hawa saw them, she recognized them. She tried to hide herself behind Adam. He said to her, Leave me alone. I came before you. Do not go between me and the angels of my Lord. So they took his soul and bombed and wrapped him, dug the grave, and laid him in it. They prayed on him and put him in his grave, saying, O children of Adam, this is your tradition at the time of death. 
Before his death, Adam reassured his children that Allah would not leave man alone on the earth, but would send his prophets to guide them. The prophets would have different names, traits, and miracles, but they would be united in one thing, the call to worship Allah alone. This was Adam's bequest to his children. Adam finished speaking and closed his eyes. Then the angels entered his room and surrounded him. When he recognized the angel of death among them, his heart smiled peacefully and he was gone.